In this video, we're going to look at how to configure and upload an item that users can spawn from their inventory. We saw how to upload a region in the last video. With this housekeeping out of the way, we can then start to build our own multiplayer first-person shooter, uploading it in a way that's modular so that players can endlessly customise and share their own unique playable maps with each other. Uploading inventory items is very similar to uploading a region. In the last video, we looked at the Scene Export Settings object that gets generated in the scene automatically when you create a new SignSpace scene. This is actually two components. The Scene Export Settings bit at the bottom here is specific to uploading a region. It has settings for no fly and so on. The virtual goods component at the top is a generic component for publishing all content – a region, a clothing item, a costume, a vehicle – or in this case, I'm going to use it to publish a furniture item. Furniture items sit in inventory in World. They can be bought from the store or they can be given to users through scripted events, uh, quest rewards and so on. A furniture item is anything that the user will spawn into a region that they own and they place it in the scene using the Room Edit tools. I have a few examples of complex furniture items here. This is an enemy spawner that goes with the first person shooter. I'll come on to this shortly. This is an entire building with a non-player character and a quest attached that rewards the user with a bundle of content and the player can even move the quest components around and place them strategically in the map. I'll do a tutorial on creating side quests like this one later too. But for now, just to focus on the furniture item itself, I'm going to upload this simple bit of fencing as a static prop that can be laid out in a map by a player. So to make this a spawnable item, first I need to add the room furniture component. I search for room and it comes up. I'm going to take this as default placement on the floor. Uh, you can choose walls or ceilings. And I'm going to put a box collider on it. This is actually specifically the collider that the user grabs to move the item around inside the room editor. Please note, if you use a mesh collider in this reference, you will need to set it to be convex. I tend to use a box or capsule collider when I can. If you have a complex object that needs a mesh collider that you can't set to be convex, uh, just add a separate box collider um, uh, for the placement reference on the room furniture item. You can also tick only enable during editing and that means the box collider won't interfere when you come out of the room edit mode, uh, which is particularly useful if you have items that people will walk through uh, during normal playtime, uh, but that they still need to be able to grab and place uh, when they're laying out the scene. I'm going to tick Allow Scale, as I've got no reason to prevent a user from changing the size of this in World. And that's basically it for the furniture item itself. The other thing I'm going to add uh, is a nav mesh obstacle component because my players are going to be deploying this in maps with non-player characters and we rebake the nav mesh when they place new furniture items like this so they can create intricate maps with different challenges for players. I don't want the NPCs to walk through this fence. Now I'm going to add the virtual goods component. Just like in the last video, I'm going to uh, choose a category, I'm going to give the product a name and fill out the basic uh, information. I'm going to fully productize this so it can go onto the live servers. So I'm adding a 430 by 430 image which will appear in the user's inventory and in preview in the shop. And I'm going to put a price on it. In one of our next videos, we'll go into the store in more depth, you know, IP policies, pricing, how you cash out. Uh, but basically, don't try and sell other people's work. 
For demonstration purposes, I'm going to mark this as for sale, even though it's not my work, uh, and I'm going to set it for gold only. Uh, gold is what we cash out for, for real money. If I tick not for sale, the item will still exist in my inventory and I can still push it to the live servers and then I can use scripts or any other function I want to to give it to the users. Uh, maybe they just have to click something in World and it puts the item in their inventory. Maybe they get it as a re reward for completing a quest. But if you want the item to appear on sale in the store, leave this unticked. Incidentally, this applies equally to regions like the one we uploaded in the last video. You can sell them in the store too, and users can buy them and select them as templates for their private maps. OK, so I've filled out the virtual goods component and I've added the images. Now I just need to drag it into the project to make a prefab. I can't upload directly from the version in the scene. You can see the Submit button is greyed out here but in the project I can upload it. Just like the region in the previous video, now it gets packaged up and sent to the processing servers. Incidentally, if I want to do updates, I can just make changes and resubmit. If I have a live product that customers have bought and I want to update that, I push the update to live and it will automatically update every copy your customers have in their inventories and laid out in their maps. That's a pretty powerful feature, so be careful pushing updates on products you've sold. Once it's uploaded, I can come to the curator site here and push it to live. Once it's live and in the store, I can track sales on the curator site as well. We show you in real time the name, product, price and timestamp for every sale you make. So if you want to, you can even create mystery shopper accounts to buy your own products and confirm that all the sales are reporting correctly. That covers the basics of the furniture item. In the next video, I'm going to do an introduction to the eight core components of the first person shooter that we're going to then do a deep dive on configuring. In the subsequent videos, we'll show how to set up each of those and upload them as individual items.